Hello and welcome to Beneath the Surface with Cheryl and Mark, episode three. My name is Cheryl Kreider Carey, Executive Director at SIM, the Society for Imaging, Informatics, and Medicine. And uh, I'm Mark Coley, the current chair of the board uh, for the Society of Imaging, Informatics, and Medicine. Great. And Mark, what is Beneath the Surface? Uh, these are, it's a set of episodes where we're going through and recording short interviews with uh, people who are committee chairs about things that they're excited about and what they're, what they're doing for SIM. Looking to go, you know, just kind of beneath the surface into the, the engagement that happens outside the annual meeting and just trying to uncover more of the great work that SIM does uh, for our members. Great. And who do we have here today for episode three? Steve, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself first? Sure. Um, I'm Steve Langer. Uh, I'm a medical physicist in radiology at Mayo Clinic. Um, I actually do most of their enterprise uh, imaging architectures, both in radiology and, and the clinical aspect. So, and I'm a, ooh, I guess I belong to SIM since about 97 and I've chaired a lot of different committees along the way. Awesome. Steve, thanks, thanks for your service and uh, commitment to SIM. Cheryl, would you like to tell us a little bit about who you are? And Sure. Um, I'm a musculoskeletal radiologist who's um, newer to the imaging informatics community and world. Um, my current uh, primary responsibility is to Vidagos, which is my consulting firm. Um, initially focused on enterprise imaging, but kind of moving into all kinds of healthcare data management. I'm also a visiting clinical professor at UPMC and mm -hmm. uh, I'm a teleradiologist for them as well. So still practice uh, clinical medicine as well as informatics. That's awesome. Thank you and welcome. And thanks for all of your contributions to the, the early history of enterprise imaging. So uh, really been foundational, one of the, one of the founding founding folks around enterprise imaging. So thank you for that. Um, we wanted to talk first about why, you know, why are you a member here at SIM? And then specifically tell us a little bit more about your committee roles and, and why you choose to go beyond membership and to, to volunteer. So maybe Steve, we'll, we'll start with you on those two questions. Thanks. Um, well, most recently I I'm now chairing the machine learning committee, but up until last year, I also co-chaired with you for a while, the uh, the hackathon committee, and I don't I don't know that that word was as as expressive as it could have been about what that committee does. But what the hackathon committee does is think about tools and APIs, which are really critical to getting innovation into healthcare and from you know bench to bedside. There's a lot of things out there that uh, do a lot of AI and whatever, but the uh, products that they create aren't in a format that's consumable by uh, healthcare systems. And so that's one of the things that we tried to educate in the hackathon committee side. And now that I'm in co-chairing the machine learning committee with George Shi, we see that in spades. There's a lot of work done, um, but it doesn't necessarily translate quickly because of either the algorithm is not timely enough or the products that it creates are not consumable by healthcare systems. And so I find the thing that attracted me to SIM in the first place is coming from medical physics, we tend to be very modality specific in that side of the house. And I was more always interested in what the IT aspects and how we get to leverage the pictures from the scanners, not, not just make them, but also leverage them. And so the nice thing about SIM is that we're at the intersections of the care providers and the engineering and the scientists and the people who run the day-to-day -day systems, the technologists, and that's a rare combination. Yeah, I think that our our super specialty, cut, you know, cutting across uh, mm -hmm. institutions or cutting across departments and things in the the institutions that we work in is really uh, a special role to play. And then, of course, you know that you you basically just defined informatics, you know, as the application and usage of the data. So, uh, yeah, it's a really special place to be. So Cheryl, um, Cheryl Peter Silge, <laughs> yeah, the other Cheryl. Yeah. Can, can you uncover for us a little bit uh, or go beneath the surface on uh, why you're a SIM member and, you know, what volunteering means to you? Certainly. So um, first, in terms of what I do at SIM, I'm on the program committee and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. One of the activities I'm involved with. Um, 
I am also on the HIMSIM Enterprise Imaging Community. And in that community, I serve on the advisory board. And I also lead the photo documentation work group. And um, for me, that's the way I roll. No matter what I do, I really like to get in and really learn. And so, I, as I said, I, um, I'm a little bit later to the imaging informatics mm -hmm. world in my career and knew I had a lot to learn and there are a lot smarter people than I am. So that's why I joined SIM was really to learn as enterprise imaging was growing. And the reason I've stayed is because the people are so welcoming and so helpful and really embrace new members. Um, it's a community that's really easy to dive right into and um, it, it gives back as much as you give. So it's really been a very rewarding opportunity for me. Great. That's, that's, I was just gonna say that that's really that's really fantastic. That's something that we hear a lot. Um, and you know, creating and sustaining that community is one of the big themes that we talked about in our strategic planning retreat, which just happened this week. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm really excited because I think our new strategic plan is actually going to call that out specifically. Uh, what can we do to not only create the community that we have, but aspire to, to making that community even more welcoming and, and really creating what we're calling a, a community of belonging. So really excited about that. Yeah, excellent. And Cheryl, tell us about the call for session proposals now. We want to hear more about your involvement in the program committee and what is in it for members. Certainly. So um, back to creating opportunities and giving, providing our membership with opportunities. I think these sessions are um, such a great way for people to get involved, to um, show what they know. Maybe they feel like they'd like to move into leadership more, but they don't know people. So this is a great way to get your name known. And it's also a great way for us to round out our program. You know, the program committee works really hard to make sure the program's well-rounded, but there might be things we miss. Um, and so this call for session proposals was designed to allow our membership to show off what they know, information that doesn't really fit in the research abstracts. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a really great initiative that you've undertaken at your organization that you think other members of SIM can benefit from. And so share that. I mean, that's really what SIM is all about is sharing information. And we've made it as flexible as we can. So, you know, maybe you don't, you're intimidated by or you've never done a full 45 minute session or maybe, you know what, what you have to share is really important but it's, it's not gonna cover 45 minutes. So you could either do a 20 minute session or a 45 minute session. And we've thrown out some topics that we think are timely, that we think the SIM community would like to know about, but we also know that we're not gonna think of everything. So you're not bound by those topics we've, we've put out there. Um, anything that you think would be interesting to the membership is really welcome. And this is the second year we're doing it. Last year we had great submissions and it was really interesting how they were so well aligned with each other and um, we were able to um, incorporate our top choices together by joining sessions of like material. And sometimes we might have to go back and say, hey, you wanna do a whole 45 minute session or maybe we'd like, there's two submissions that sound really great about one topic. Can you guys split a session? So we want you to be flexible and you want, um, to know that we're gonna be flexible as well to maximize what we're getting from our membership. Excellent. Wow, and so second year out of the gate for session yep. proposals. Steve, you have something first time out of the gate this year, emphasizing Sims bias towards action. Tell us about your call for AI models. 
Right. Thanks. So um, George, she and I and Bennett Landman, who uh, is also on the member of the committee, we're introducing actually for the first time to my knowledge in healthcare, a call for AI models. It's very analogous to a call for abstracts, but instead of just getting, you know, um, a poster or a paper out of it or a 10 minute talk, the idea is, is you do that part too. You'd give us the paper or the talk, but also give us the model and tell us what kind of data you prefer to use with it such that we can actually have a bit of a contest, just like we do in call for abstracts. We have best paper. This would be like call and, and best model. And, and we're doing this for a couple of reasons. Um, basically, we all know that typically if you're doing AI and you're writing a paper in it, oftentimes when you're submitting that paper and you're quoting your sensitivity, specificity and stuff, we're really at the mercy of the author to, to be you know, forthcoming about that. And also, even if they are, that performance is gonna be highly dependent on whatever data they used to train mm. and, and run on that model. So part of it is, is to, to democratize the data models used. So let's say we have three different submissions on chest and finding pneumothoraces in the chest. Um, this way we decouple the, the tight coupling between what an author modeled and what their data set was. Instead, we're gonna take that model and, and bring it into SIM and run it against public data sets that we happen to have. And right now we tend to be just, just heavy, but mm -hmm. run it against data sets. So we kind of level the playing field in, the, in that way and run them all against a common you know, public data set. The other thing that we're trying to address is the high variability in how people review papers. Depending on what your background is, you may think a paper is really clinic clinically great um, because it aligns with what your clinical duties are, but maybe it's underlying mathematical performance is a little shaky. Conversely, you might have people that come with PhD backgrounds and do a lot of AI. They know the math all day long, but they may not realize that even though the math uh, is, is excellent, the actual end result is not all that useful. So what we're trying to do is convolve all these different galaxies of questions that people have and bring to bear in their personal experience and come up with a structured way to review. So ideally, depending on whomever you are, when you review these papers, people from opposite backgrounds would hopefully converge to a kind of standardized score. And that's what we're, we're aiming uh -huh. for. And you have a phrase, How, what do you call that? Well, I call it reproducible reviewing and George calls it, um, enhanced peer review. Uh -huh. So I, I think one of, the, one of the things that I was excited about is that, uh, you know, people submit models uh, and then we're gonna try to match those with, with data that's available. And then we're actually gonna have uh, actual radiologists looking at and evaluating the output of the model, the model, the model data. Uh, so that's, that I think is really exciting because it, it's, a, it's a new opportunity to get external validation and external feedback on your model. That's something that's very difficult to do today in, in a research setting. So I'm really yeah. excited about this new opportunity. So let's say I have a proposal or a model. What do I do? How do I submit? Well, I believe it's what, February 19th, we're going to roll out the call for models. And if you get that, or maybe at the end of this, you can stick on the URL that links to that. Yeah. Um, and right. then people will click that and just start following the instructions and it'll lead you through to the submission process. So it's open now, deadline February 19th. And Cheryl, for your... So for us, um, abstract, the call for proposals is open as well. Our deadline though is February 10th. So I wanna emphasize ah. that the AI group has a little different deadline than us. Yeah. So people don't get confused. And again, I think if you just go on the SIM website and go to conferences and click your way through, there's a really great set of um, information on the page about what is the session, the topics, how to submit. So um, just go to the SIM website. It'll take you to exactly what you need. And remember the date is February 10th. And um, if you're thinking about it, give it a whirl, you know? You, if, if you don't submit, you certainly won't get accepted. Um, and <laughs> if, if you submit and don't get ex, ex, you know, accepted, it's still a learning experience and we've still seen your name. And so all of that's good. So Absolutely. go out there and write a submission for us. Awesome. 
Thank you both for all you do for SIM, your volunteer hours, your actually helping us in our bias towards action in both of your respective areas. We so very much appreciate that. Thank you. Very excited to hear about all this new stuff and I'm really looking forward to the, the annual meeting this year. Thanks for making it fantastic. Thank you both. Bye everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye.